This is John. John seems to attract all kinds of bad weather and natural disasters wherever he goes. See for yourself. One day, John notices his dog is restless. The pooch keeps scratching the entrance door and wandering around the house. He even tries to hide in the corner, howling and barking. When some mugs start to clink in your cupboard, John realizes what it means. The noise is produced by foreshocks. Many earthquakes leading up to the main event. Earthquakes often happen in clusters. After a few weak quakes, a much bigger one is likely to be on the way. Sometime before the disaster strikes, people might notice bizarre blue lights. Some of them seem to be coming out of the ground. Others are hovering in the air. These are earthquake lights. They may appear days or mere seconds before the ground starts shaking. Now, John is walking along the ocean shore. Suddenly, he sees the water retreat from the beach really, really fast. Uh-oh. John, run away as quickly as you can and find some high ground. A tsunami is coming. And your life might depend on how fast you react. If John spots a bizarre and unexpected rise in sea level, it can be another sign of an approaching tsunami. This happens in 40% of cases. The incoming water is the first tsunami wave. The second one, way, way larger, will come in in about 10 minutes. John can also notice seawater bubbling, swirling, and creating bizarre patterns. It's another sure sign a tsunami is near. Hmm. John feels there's something strange about the sun. Through his special super dark sunglasses, he sees that there's some uneven flares around the star's contour. If these bizarre rays are accompanied by auroras all over the world, they're a sign of a solar storm. Such storms are usually caused by disturbances in the sun's magnetic field. In this case, the bursts of gas and radiation on the surface of the sun get so massive and powerful that they can even reach our planet. Luckily, solar storms aren't really dangerous for people, but they can mess with electricity and even cause blackouts. The sky over John's head is darkening and turning ominously green. Something hits him on the forehead. Ouch! He picks up the offending object. It's a hailstone, but it's not that cold outside, and it's not raining. Soon, he hears some noise. It's approaching rapidly and turns into a loud roar. It sounds as if a freight train is moving towards him, but it's not a train. It's a tornado. The funnel isn't visible behind a cloud of debris, but John can't mistake this rotating column of air for anything else. Are you on the road, John? Then get as far away from your car as you can. Fast! Find a ditch, lie down in it, and cover your head. Oh, you're inside? Then get away from the windows and hide underground if possible. And please, John, be very careful if you spot some conically shaped clouds. Those mean severe storms. And if you notice that such a cloud starts spinning around, immediately search for shelter. The cloud is transitioning into a tornado right in front of your eyes. On the bright side, John should only worry about warm conical clouds. Cold ones are totally harmless. The only problem is to figure out the temperature of the cloud he sees. Duh! Ah, look. John just spotted some weirdly shaped trees. They look like the letter J and grow on a slope. It means the ground under John's feet is likely to be unstable. If he keeps wandering around, it can cause a bad landslide. Square waves appear when two different wave patterns crash into each other. This phenomenon does look kinda awesome. No, don't go into the water, John. Keep watching it from the shore. Cross currents in that spot can easily pull even a skilled swimmer under the surface. John keeps walking along the shore. At one point, he sees wild, choppy waves carrying ocean debris and seaweed. This time, he stays out of the water. He knows it can be a sign of a strong rip current it can carry a swimmer far away into the ocean. How about a walk in the park? John likes this idea. The sun is shining and the sky is so blue and beautiful. Suddenly, he spots a rapidly growing vertical cloud. At first, it looks bright white. But as it approaches, alarmingly fast, it becomes dense and inky. The sky is darkening. It's getting windy. That's when the guy notices that his hair stands on end. It's his cue that he's about to get hit by lightning. At this very moment, positive charges are rising through his body. They're reaching towards the negatively charged part of the storm. If he doesn't react fast, these charges will meet. 
there's nowhere to hide, so John should crouch down and try to make himself smaller than the objects around him. Oh no, John, don't lie down on the ground. It may be damp and thus a great conductor of electricity. There are other signs that scream danger during a lightning storm. John's palms may begin to sweat. He might hear bizarre crackling and buzzing sounds coming from metal objects nearby. His skin can start tingling. There might be a strange metallic taste in his mouth. Plus, John is likely to smell chlorine. That's how ozone smells. Electrical charges split the molecules of nitrogen and oxygen, which are the main gases making up the atmosphere, into separate atoms. When these atoms come together again, some of them produce molecules made up of three oxygen atoms. That's ozone. We can smell it during a thunderstorm because downdrafts bring this gas from high altitudes to your level. Some bugs can feel a storm coming. They get ready for a natural disaster by freezing. So, when John notices that insects around him look drowsy, he knows to get ready. Oh, and bees can predict heavy rainstorms. These critters begin to work much harder the day before it starts raining. While walking next to the river during a period of heavy rains, John hears a roaring sound. He feels paralyzed with fear. It's likely to be a flash flood moving in his direction. Indeed, he soon sees debris coming down with the flow. The water is rapidly changing its color, becoming muddier and darker. Flash floods are very, very dangerous. Take care of your safety immediately, John. Another day, John sees a spectacular wall cloud. It seems to be stretching for up to five miles. In the best case scenario, it's just a severe storm coming. But if the wall cloud begins to move in a circle, it's a sure sign of a tornado. John is walking across a snowfield in the mountains, listening to the sounds the ice under his feet makes. The noise is kinda hollow. Hmm. Quickly check whether there are cracks around your footprints, John. If so, the chances are an avalanche is about to happen. Soon, John sees an avalanche moving in his direction. He does his best to get off the slope. In most cases, he could probably outrun it by heading downhill and then veering sideways, but not this time. He realizes he doesn't have enough time and heads for the nearest tree. If John keeps holding on to it really tightly, the avalanche might not pull him along. But if this doesn't work, he should try to swim up to the snow's surface while the avalanche is still moving. On a pretty nice summer evening, John notices leaves with soft stems droop all of a sudden. Ah, uh, it might be because of an upcoming storm. Right before extreme weather arrives, the air usually becomes more humid. Leaves also get damp and heavy, and the wind easily flips them over. John lives in a pretty old house and is used to having cracks in the interior walls. But one day, he notices that some of them have widened. And look, there are a few new ones. It's an alarm bell. He lives in an area with loads of limestone, so new cracks can mean a sinkhole is about to open next to his house. John is hurrying home, trying not to waste time admiring shelf clouds. They look like something from a sci-fi movie. They form when warm and moist air gets caught in a thunderstorm updraft, and these ominous clouds most often mean a storm is coming. Earthquake lights are some of the most mysterious natural phenomena. They can show up before, during, or after an earthquake. They're usually white or blue and last for a short time, but sometimes they can last up to 10 minutes. It's hard to study them because they can happen at different distances from an earthquake center. We know that they only happen during powerful earthquakes that have a Richter scale rating of five or higher. Scientists believe they may be caused by the release of ionized oxygen that occurs when certain rocks break apart. This next weird phenomenon is not spontaneous, but it doesn't make it any less impressive. You'll need to head over to La Macarena, Colombia to see it. It's called the Liquid Rainbow or the River of Five Colors. Here you can see the river change colors from red, yellow, green and purple depending on the light and water conditions. This amazing sight is caused by a very talented aquatic plant. It attaches itself to the rocks in the river and gives the water a reddish color. The water is also very clear with very few particles floating in it, making the red pigments show even clearer. 
Should you ever reach this amazing destination, you'll also meet diverse fauna hanging around the lake. Red macaws can be seen at this location as well as howler monkeys. Every fall and spring, a magnificent natural phenomenon takes place in the Wadden Sea region in Northern Europe. Approximately 1.5 million starlings flock at the same spot to rest in the tall grass for the night. However, before the night settles in, the starlings may be surrounded by hungry birds of prey. This creates a mesmerizing dance as the starlings form intricate patterns to escape from the birds of prey. This spectacle is referred to as the black sun and involves thousands of millions of birds flying in formation. The reason for their synchronized flight is that it makes it more challenging for predators to single out and capture some of the starlings. Volcanic sounds, also called volcanic acoustics, can happen before an eruption. They come from magma getting pressurized in cracks and pipes, bubbling explosions, and hot water systems near the surface of the volcano. As the magma rises, gas builds up and cracks the surface open. The gas-rich magma creates a sound like a pipe organ, which is known as a volcanic tremor. The sound changes over time, resembling a natural concert. A volcanic tremor is a sign that an eruption is coming. So it's best to seek shelter if you hear anything unusual near a volcanic site. One of the most surreal phenomena to experience on Earth is near sand dunes. Should you ever be at the top of a sand dune, you may be lucky enough to hear one of the strangest things, singing sand. The truth is scientists have yet to fully understand why this phenomenon occurs. One theory claims that the sand might produce this sound while sliding down the dunes because of the friction between its grains. But how can you recognize whether what you hear is singing sand? Well, it's similar to an airplane flying in the distance. One of the few places on Earth where sand makes such a loud noise that it can actually be heard by tourists is in the Namib Desert in Africa, or in the barking sands of Hawaii. To see a rare golden waterfall, you'll have to drive to Yosemite National Park, more precisely, to the Horsetail Falls. You will need to plan your trip ahead of time to make sure you get there either in the winter or early spring. It's the only period of the year when this beautiful sight can be spotted. Let's be clear, it's not real gold falling down the mountain. Actually, it's an optical illusion. When at dusk, the sunlight hits the waterfall in such a unique way that it makes it look like a river of lava or gold. In a Californian national park called Death Valley, there are some rocks that seem to move on their own and leave trails behind. Scientists thought the roadrunner bird could be responsible for these movements, but this creature is too small to drag rocks around. They also thought it could be the wind, but the rocks are also too heavy to be blown away. Scientists have been studying the rocks for years. But until 2014, they hadn't actually seen the rocks move. They'd just seen them in different positions at different times. With the help of time-lapse photography, they discovered that the movement was caused by a combination of rainfall, rapid temperature changes, and a bit of wind. When it rains, the water sometimes freezes and the rocks get stuck in the ice. As the temperature rises, the ice starts to melt and moves slowly, dragging the rocks with it. The traces left behind solidify under the heat of the sun. The ice sheets that move the rocks is very thin and evaporates quickly which is why it was difficult for scientists to understand this phenomenon. Have you ever heard of a dirty thunderstorm? Buckle up, because I'm about to take you on a wild ride through the world of volcanic lightning. No, it's not a new dancing technique, although that would be pretty impressive. It's just a funky way of saying lightning and thunder during a volcanic eruption. When a regular thunderstorm happens, positive and negative particles collide and create a big spark of lightning. And the rumble you hear? That's just thunder. But when a volcano starts to holler, some ash particles get electrified and start colliding with each other. This causes electrical discharges, making it look like there's lightning coming straight from the volcano. And with all the ash, smoke, and gas flying around, it looks like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. 
That's why it's sometimes called a dirty thunderstorm too. Whoa, did you just see that giant ray of light shooting up into the sky? They're called light pillars. And don't worry, they're not a magic trick, just a bunch of ice crystals playing tricks on us. You see, when it's cold outside, these ice crystals floating near the ground reflect light from unshielded lights and create these columns of light that look like they're coming from outer space. But really, it's just a bunch of little crystals showing off their reflective skills. And if you think those natural light pillars are cool, wait till you see the artificial ones. They can be even taller because the light from streetlights is not the same. Ice crystals can reflect the light even if they're a little tilted. Just imagine, all that light is coming from streetlights just a few feet away. So next time you see a light pillar, don't run for cover, just enjoy the show. If you come across these quirky, bubble-like shapes in the sky, consider yourself lucky. These little gems are called mammatus clouds, and they're not your everyday run-of-the-mill clouds. Most clouds are formed when air rises, making them look like big cotton balls. But mammatus clouds are formed when air sinks, making them look like they're upside down. The air above and below such clouds creates a little turbulence, and before you know it, cloud particles form perfectly round orbs. Just don't stand there gawking at them for too long. They often signal that a thunderstorm is on its way. What do we have here? It looks like the sun is wearing a colorful party hat made of rainbows on top of the Ohr Mountains in Germany. This phenomenon is called a sun halo, by the way. These snow-covered trees look like they're joining in on the fun too. It's all thanks to those ice crystals in high clouds. They love to bend and reflect light, making it look like the sun is having a halo lava lamp dance party. And yes, it might mean that bad weather is just around the corner, but don't let it spoil your fun. You can still hang around and take some great pictures. Hello, distinguished guests, and welcome to Aquarium Bright. Here, you will get to see the most dangerous sea and ocean creatures, but don't let what I said mislead you. It's very well possible for you to come across one of these underwater animals during a walk on the beach. So take a look at them carefully now and you might just avoid a disaster. Is it fish or is it stone? What you're looking at is commonly known as the stonefish, but its fancier names include the Dornorn and the Sinansia. If you're into diving and observing the underwater, you might already have come across one without noticing. Its appearance makes it almost impossible to distinguish it from a real stone due to its gray coloration and mottled appearance, especially if you're wearing fogged snorkel goggles. So you better pay attention because otherwise the consequences can be unfortunate since stonefish are the most venomous fish known. Although some types of stonefishes are known to live in rivers, and most of them are found in coral reefs near the tropical Pacific and Indian Oceans. Their needle-like dorsal fin spines stick up when they're disturbed or threatened and inject the poison they contain. The most common reason why stonefish stings occur is swimmers stepping on them without realizing it. However, you don't need to be in the water to get stung. Since they can survive out of the water for up to 24 hours, you'll have to watch where you step when you're at the beach as well. Those who got stung by stonefish describe their experience to be extremely distressing. Their venom can result in infection, and in some cases, it is known to cause shock and paralysis. It might come as a bit of a shock, but despite its bad reputation, stonefish is edible if it's prepared properly. When the fish is heated, its venom breaks down. And if the dorsal fins, which are the main source of its venom, are removed, raw stonefish is served as part of sashimi too. This creature might look like it came out of a science fiction movie, but it's very much real. Say hello to the blue-ringed octopuses. Don't be deceived by their small size, which can range between 5 to 8 inches, including their arms, because they're packed with venom to cause great damage to as many as 26 people within minutes. Just like stonefishes, blue-ringed octopuses are found in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, from Japan to Australia. They typically live on coral reefs and rocky areas of the seafloor. Some may also be found in tide pools, seagrass, and algal beds. Blue-ringed octopuses are not aggressive in nature, 
When they're not seeking food such as crabs or shrimps, or searching for a mate, they often hide in marine debris, shells, or crevices. It's only if they're provoked, cornered, or handled that they get dangerous to humans. When they're threatened, they turn bright yellow or blue iridescent rings appear all over their body as a warning display towards the potential predators. Their bites usually come unnoticed, so you might not be able to realize you're bitten until it's too late. The venom of a blue-ringed octopus can cause dizziness and loss of senses and motor skills, and ultimately, paralysis. So, better try to keep your hands to yourself and back away in a hurry if you see one. Nope, it's not a flower bouquet, so don't try to pick and smell one of those pink tube-like things. What's standing before your eyes is a marine animal called a flower urchin. It may look gorgeous, but don't let the looks deceive you. It was named the most dangerous sea urchin in the 2014 Guinness World Records. Flower urchins inhabit the tropical areas of the Indo-West Pacific and are found among coral reefs, rocks, sand, and seagrass beds at depths of 0 to 295 feet. The most noticeable feature of them is their pedicularia, which are claw-shaped defensive organs that are also found in sea stars. What makes flower urchins differ from any other sea urchin is the fact that their pedicularia is, as the name suggests, flower-like, and usually pinkish-white to yellowish-white in color, with a central purple dot. Hidden underneath those flowers, they possess short and blunt spines. Although many sea urchins deliver their venom through such spines, flower urchins deliver their venom through their pedicularia, or flowers. If they're undisturbed, the tips of these flowers are usually expanded into round, cup-like shapes. On their surface, they possess tiny sensors with which they can detect threats. And once they contact such threats, these flowers immediately snap shut and start injecting venom. What's weird is that the little claws of the flowers can sometimes break off from their stalks, stick to the point of contact, and continue injecting venom for hours into whoever touched it. Yeesh! Looks like a giant puddle of melted strawberry ice cream, right? You wish! It's a lion's mane jellyfish, which is also called giant jellyfish, arctic red jellyfish, or hairy jelly. They're known to prefer cool water. That's why they can mostly be found in the Arctic, northern Atlantic, and northern Pacific Oceans. But it's possible to spot them around the British Isles or in the Scandinavian waters too. Lion's mane jellyfish are one of the largest known species of jellyfish. They get their name from their long, flowing hair-like tentacles and can reach lengths up to 10 feet. And although the average bell diameter of a lion's mane jellyfish is around 20 inches, they can sometimes attain a diameter of over 7 feet. The largest lion's mane jellyfish recorded was seen in 1865 off the coast of Massachusetts. It was measured to have tentacles around 125 feet long and a diameter of 7 feet. To help you picture it, this is longer than a blue whale. Lion's mane jellyfish hunt by extending their tentacles outward and creating a trap to catch their food. Since they have around 1,200 stinging tentacles, the fish would have to be extremely lucky to be able to escape them. The sting of a lion's mane jellyfish is usually not life-threatening, but you would still want to avoid swimming into its tentacles because it can be very painful to humans. And if you see one washed up on the beach, better not touch it because it can still deliver a sting long after they've been on the shore. Fun fact, the lion's mane jellyfish appears in the Sherlock Holmes story, The Adventure of the Lion's Mane, as a suspect. But don't worry, we won't give you any spoilers. The last marine animal you're seeing now is a sea snake, and yes, they are different from eels. There are 69 identified species of sea snakes. Most of them can be found in the tropical and subtropical waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans, and they have been around for millions of years. To make things easier, scientists have separated all different species of sea snakes into two categories, true sea snakes and sea crates. Whereas true sea snakes spend almost all their time at sea, sea crates can spend some time on land as well. If you see a snake on the beach, you can tell whether it's a land or sea snake by looking at its tail. If it's paddle-like, then that's a sea snake you got there, but make sure to keep your distance in both cases. 
All sea snakes need to surface regularly to breathe since they have no gills. That's why you can come across one while swimming. If that happens, you better swim away as fast as you can because most sea snakes have more venom than the average cobra or rattlesnake. However, since they only attack if provoked, bites are quite rare. One more cool fact about sea snakes, they are the only reptiles to give birth in the oceans. The majority of sea snakes keep the eggs within themselves and give birth to nearly fully formed snakes while swimming. That's except for the yellow-lipped sea crate though. They come onto land to lay eggs of their little ones. Remember the stonefish from the beginning of our tour? They're hunted by sea snakes. Blame the food chain. North Yungas Road in Bolivia is one of the most picturesque and most hazardous roads in the world. Just imagine biking along a cliff trail at a mind-numbing height, overlooking the lush Bolivian jungle and misty mountains at a distance. What a view! But as soon as you realize you're riding on a 10-foot wide stretch of road, some of which isn't even paved, you might get skin crawls. And for a good reason. Over 200 folks tumble to their demise each year on this devious mountain climb. And the absence of any guardrail doesn't help at all. Now, if you're more into walking, consider the Husseini Bridge in Pakistan. It's officially the most dangerous hanging bridge in the world, but hardly the only one in the country. It's a long and nerve-wracking traverse over Lake Borat, with many planks of the bridge missing and the whole construction creaking ominously in the wind. Still, the place has become a major tourist attraction, although the old and broken bridge visible nearby only adds to the impression that you're inevitably going to fall to a screaming end. Well, at least you can be thankful that the lake beneath is not Lake Natron in Tanzania. If you fall into water, you still have a chance of survival. If you fall into the waters of Natron, not so much. The pH levels here are a skin-melting 10.5. What passes for water is more like an alkaline soup. No wonder this place is so peaceful. Pretty much nothing wants to live here. And yet, flocks of flamingos come to Lake Natron to breed every few seasons, and it becomes a white-pink paradise for the period. Positively. Which can't be said about the Danakil Depression in Ethiopia. Despite its beautiful, otherworldly landscape, it's perhaps the loneliest place on Earth. Yellow, orange, and green mounds are made of salt, sulfur, and iron, creating views like nowhere else on the planet. Yet the combination of temperature and toxic minerals makes this place absolutely unlivable. Researchers coming here haven't found even microscopic life in this valley. Really, like another planet. Beautiful and desolate. On the other hand, there's an island that's bubbling with life, yet still you don't want to be there. It's called Snake Island, and the name says it all. It's chock full of snakes. In fact, there are so many of them, especially the venomous varieties, that Brazil has forbidden access to the island to any and all visitors. But even if it wasn't closed off, not many would be brave enough to go to a place where a single step offshore could land you a venomous bite. Now, I'll bet that fly geyser in the middle of the Nevada desert was created partly because humans became jealous of that. This place had been just another bit of desert until 1916. People came here to drill a water well. They quickly saw the error of their ways, though. The water came out boiling hot and unfit for drinking. 50 years later, there was another attempt, but the same thing happened. We don't learn, do we? Anyway, hot water never stops spewing from under the ground. And today, we have a massive geyser cluster colored in shades of red, orange, and yellow. Now, I say let's take a break from things that could bite, burn, or crush you and take a walk in a serene forest. We're in Japan, and it's Sagano Bamboo Forest, a marvelous natural park where you can't help but hush your voice and just look. And listen, too. Because the sound of the wind in the bamboo trees is the first ever officially recognized soundscape. All the more surprising to find such a place just half an hour's ride from Kyoto, one of the busiest cities in the country. Take a deep breath of fresh air now. You're gonna need it. 
we're going underwater. Behold the Great Blue Hole, apparently named by Captain Obvious. It's one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Located off the coast of Belize, this giant sinkhole is a massive tourist attraction, especially popular among divers. It's actually a whole cave system, and they say it gets weirder and more picturesque the deeper you dive. Beware, though! It's popular among sharks, too, and both bull sharks and hammerheads have been spotted here more than once. Here, have a towel and prepare for some barbecue. The Darvasa gas crater is waiting. A huge hole again, this time in the ground and burning. Over 50 years ago, geologists found this spot in Turkmenia, Central Asia, and were quite a bit alarmed. There was an enormous deposit of methane, a highly flammable gas, underground. They set it on fire to prevent the gas from spreading, and since then, the holes kept burning. It's over 200 feet across and 100 feet deep, and no one knows when it'll finally run out of fuel. Is it too hot again? Well, let's have a little swim with jellyfish then. Jellyfish Lake on one of the rock islands in Palau is perfectly described by its name. In 2005, there were about 30 million of these creatures here. Although today only 700,000 of them remain, their number is growing, and tourists can actually swim with them. Until they get stung, that is. Okay, kidding, these jellyfish don't have stingers, so it's safe. Until they decide to grow stingers, of course. From the depths, we're going even deeper. The Gomantong Caves are our next stop. The cave system on the island of Borneo could have been Batman's hideout, given how many bats live there. At night, these nocturnal animals fly out of the cave in the thousands, making you wonder why you're still there watching it. But if you're brave enough to go inside the cave, you can truly marvel at the variety given to us by nature. Because there, on the floor and walls of the cave, lie tons of bat droppings, giving food and home to millions of cockroaches, parasites, and giant centipedes. Wondrous. Okay, I'm out of here. Now, if you're as easy to get away as I am, here's a place to go. Medidi National Park in Bolivia. It's one of the largest protected areas in South America and is home to an immense variety of animals, birds, and insects. I could do without the mosquitoes, but it's still among the few places where you could see wild macaws, monkeys, capybaras, and dozens of other creatures. Still, it's better to be careful because wild animals aren't always happy to see you. And there are known cases of attacks on tourists. Ever wanted to feel like Frodo Baggins in Middle Earth? Here's your chance! In Iceland, there's a slumbering volcano named Thrigúka Gegurth that welcomes guests to a tea party. Now, don't confuse this with another infamous Icelandic volcano, Eyjafjallajökull. Yeah, it's easy to mix them up, they sound so similar. Here, tourists are actually ushered down into the volcano and spend close to an hour inside, looking at the magmatic landscape. They say Thrinuka Gegur can't wake up all of a sudden, but who knows? Don't forget to bring the Ring of Power just in case. From the lowest dungeon to the highest peak, and here we are at Mount Hua in China. It's called the most dangerous hike in the world for a reason. It's high, it's crazy scary, and it's a hike. At the height of 7,000 feet, which already makes me reconsider, there are several wooden planks nailed to the sheer wall of the mountain. When you get to the start of the hike, you put on safety gear and realize there's no turning back. You have to walk all the way. And then back! But if you're lucky, you'll see a crowd of hundreds of tourists and decide not to spend hours waiting for your turn. Finally. To really creep you out, I'm taking you to Pripyat in Ukraine. If you watch the TV show Chernobyl, you probably know what happened in this area. If you didn't see it, well, don't have a meltdown. Much of the town is still off-limits for visitors, but there are already guided tours around the place. As haunting as it is, the landscape has some magnetic force. The silence makes you keep as quiet as you can. Also, you can see with your own eyes what happens when people abandon a whole city. Nature takes back what once belonged to it. Creeping vines along the walls and lampposts, trees and bushes sprouting from under concrete. And the main attraction in this desolate place is the rusty old Ferris wheel. That sure shivers my timbers. 
This spiky tree knows how to shoot, so you better stay away from it. It's called a sandbox tree, and you can find it in Amazonia. Initially, its seeds are formed in the shape of a small pumpkin. As time goes by, they harden and mature. But here comes the fun part. Just as they reach peak maturity, the seeds pop and shoot out at a speed of 150 miles per hour. They can even reach distances of 60 feet. That's what makes it so risky to be in their way during the blast process. Not to mention the seeds are poisonous too. Sure, some trees don't grow completely upright. But a tree that's altogether bent, with its branches even touching the ground, is a sight not to be missed. Such a tree, called the El Arbol de la Sabina, grows in Spain. Its shape depends on the wind, as the tree bends in its direction. As a result, not only does it often have a weird shape, but it can also change it completely during different times of the year. This flexible tree can reach more than 26 feet in height and tends to grow in the most improbable of locations, like on rocks. Now, how about a tree that's as old as dinosaurs? Discovered in 1994, the Wallamy pine tree species can be seen in the Blue Mountains of Sydney, Australia. It dates back to over 200 million years, so it's easy to believe dinosaurs might have even roamed around it. Since these trees are endangered, and only 100 exhibits exist to this day in the wild, the scientists don't feel like disclosing their location. They want to make sure the trees are well-preserved. Also, they're important for science, as studying them may help us uncover new information on the Earth's past. The bark of the tree can teach us many different things, like different temperature periods or exposure to various chemicals. The tree of life gets its name because it's able to withstand difficult conditions and actually thrive. Located in the desert outskirts of Bahrain, the Prosopis cineraria has a very deep root system which allows it to survive in the scorching heat. The scientists still can't find out how it manages to get sufficient water. It's so special that it gathers over 50,000 tourists each year. La India Dormida in Panama is a mountainous area that's shaped like the body of a sleeping girl. It's part of a bigger, mysterious region called La Val de Anton, one of the largest inhabited dormant volcanoes in the world. And it has some pretty weird trees, too. Square ones. Even the rings of these trees, meaning the interior of their trunks, are the same shape, with sharp edges, sometimes even at a perfect 90-degree angle. Researchers have tried to piece together why these trees grow in this particular shape. They even tried taking samples of some of the trees and planting them elsewhere, to see if they retain that shape. It wasn't the case, so it's clear that the odd shape of the trees has something to do with the valley itself. Some people believe that a local farmer might have originally planted the trees in boxes, forcing the trees to grow like that, to reduce lumber waste, since round trees often end up being cut in sharp angled pieces. One of the oldest and biggest trees in the world is found in the Sequoia National Park of the United States. It's called General Sherman and stretches at 275 feet. It's almost as big as the Statue of Liberty. Its circumference is equally as impressive, as near the ground it is around 102 feet around. As for its age, we can only guess it to be between 2,300 and 2,700 years. That's an old tree! (laughs) There are a lot of beautiful species of trees out there, but none as striking as the rainbow eucalyptus found in the Philippines. It almost looks hand-painted because of its multicolored layers of bark. This tree also shades its layers irregularly, which means it shows a lot of colors at once, from green to blue, then purple to orange, and then finally reaching brown. It's not used for decorating purposes, but rather for paper manufacturing. Located in Namibia is a tree that's also weird in shape and pretty dangerous, the bottle tree. Okay, in terms of shape, it's pretty self-explanatory, with a round trunk that narrows down toward the top. But the milky sap harvested from the tree is extremely poisonous. Legend has it that local hunters used to dip their arrows in it for added efficiency. It does look really beautiful during bloom season, with flowers that grow in pink and white with a red center. Now, to see a crooked tree every now and then isn't so special. But to see a whole forest of them, you'd have to travel to the Polish town of Grafino. 
Near it, there is a forest made out of 400 oddly shaped trees. They've been curved with mechanical intervention. They didn't just grow like that, but their purpose remains a mystery to this day. Some have said it's because the wood from the trees was intended for furniture, or even for the construction of boats. But either way, the forest was eventually abandoned. A silk cotton tree has taken over the ancient Ta Prom temples of Cambodia, creating a spectacular view. The massive branches of the silk cotton trees were free to grow over the structures for ages, going back as far as the 12th century. The temples have been restored and are accessible to tourists. The dragon's blood tree grows in the Canary Islands of northwest Africa. Locals used to say that once a dragon passes away, it transforms into a tree. Standing at an impressive 50 feet in length, the tree is named like that due to its red sap, which can be harvested from the bark. The red substance to this day is used for dyes and in medicine. One of the biggest, oldest, and most impressive trees in the world is the Sunland Baobab tree. It's 72 feet high and has a circumference of 155 feet. It's located in South Africa. What makes it even more spectacular is the fact that it is naturally hollow inside. So, a small lounge was set up inside the tree back in 1933. It initially could support up to 20 individuals, but it can now host up to 60 people. Not to mention, the tree dates back over 6,000 years. The silver birch tree spread across Scandinavia and Northeast Europe and found a way to reflect light. Its bark became lighter in color, and during the colder season, when its branches also freeze over, the site is something of a natural winter wonderland. It also developed a partnership with a fungus that connects to its roots and fans out under the forest, gathering up nutrients that trees can't reach. For these services, the tree gives the fungus sugars in return. The birch's companion is dangerous and shouldn't be consumed by people. It's easy to recognize with the classical scarlet-topped red-sprinkled mushroom head. A natural festival not to be missed is Japan's cherry blossom season. The pinkish-white blossom is deeply rooted in Japanese culture, going hand-in-hand with a local saying called mano no arare. Was I even close on that? Which relatively translates to the fact that everything is temporary, regardless of how perfect or beautiful it is. Should you ever visit Japan, you'll quickly see that the cherry blossom symbol is everywhere, from company logos to even clothing or household items. Yosemite National Park in California once had an amazing tree structure that was turned into a tunnel. It was a coast redwood tree, stretching 227 feet tall. It was nicknamed Wawona, the Native American word for the hoot of an owl. The tree fell in 1969 because of a heavy snow, but it survived as an ecosystem for animals, plants, and insects. It's now called the fallen tunnel tree. One tree species known as Fercapas Vivervet, well, you read it, is the rarest plant on Earth. The Guinness World Record book recorded one single tree of its kind off the coast of New Zealand. It wasn't always that lonely, but humans brought goats to the island, which nipped at every other member of its family. Ow! Luckily, scientists are looking at ways to plant new specimens. You're hiking in the wilderness, looking for a safe spot to set up camp. All you can hear are leaves and branches crackling under your footsteps. Some squirrels are running up a tree over there. But suddenly, something unexpected happens. You notice something weird in the distance in between the trees. It kind of looks like a concrete structure of some kind. Weird. At this point, you're at least 20 miles deep into the woods, and there are no nearby towns or villages, as far as you know. So you decide to go off the trail with your friends to get a closer look. But as you get nearer, you realize that it's leading to nowhere. Hmm, what's it doing here, in the middle of literally nowhere? And it doesn't even lead to anything. You put on your Sherlock Holmes cap and investigate. So, maybe there used to be an old house or mansion here that collapsed over the years, and the only thing left is a staircase? But, weirdly enough, after circling the bizarre structure, you realize there's no trace of any ruins or even foundations. It's like someone just sliced a staircase off their house, cake-style, and plopped it here for no reason. Okay? 
you and your friends aren't really into getting a whole lot closer. Something feels wrong. The longer you look at this weird structure, the more you feel a super creepy presence. Something tells you you should probably leave the area as fast as possible. As weird as this sounds, discoveries of random staircases illogically found in the woods are surprisingly common. Some are made of wood, others of brick or stone. Some look ancient, while others look like they were finished yesterday. The one thing they all have in common, they all lead to absolutely nowhere, and they're all found in super mysterious locations. One of the most famous ones is in Chesterfield, New Hampshire. A long, medieval-looking staircase made of stones with Roman arches in the middle of the woods. It's believed to have been part of Madame Antoinette Sherry's castle. She was a big singer back in Paris. The castle dates back about 100 years, and it was later discovered again in 1962. This time, there was nothing but a staircase. Another mysterious ancient staircase dates back to 9,000 years ago. It's in a forest in Italy. It looks like a series of stairs that lead to a tiny platform at the top. Now, why go through all the trouble of building the thing if it leads to nowhere? Well, some scientists think it could have been some sort of ritual tower. But your guess is as good as theirs. There's an anomaly in the Indian Ocean known as the Indian Ocean Geoid Low, or IOGL. It produces the largest distorting natural gravitational force in the world. Heavy mineral deposits, many deep-sea trenches, and magma reservoirs disturb the magnetic field in this area. Earth's gravity changes in different places around the planet. It allows researchers to look for patterns and figure out what's happening beneath the surface. Higher gravity fields usually mean denser materials below and vice versa. Some scientists believe that the anomaly might be a dent in the planet's mantle that is working its way up to the crust. The Nihau Island actually rejects the fruits of today's advancements. There are no cars in sight since the locals get around on foot or by bicycles. No wonder their legs have great definition. They thrive without running water, internet, or shops. The only school on the entire island is powered by solar energy with a backup generator. And what's awesome is that it's the only school in the state that's powered by the sun. Being a resident of the island, the local explains some ground rules the permanent residents must abide by. If they do break these rules, they can be evicted. Now, not far from Bangkok, in northeastern Thailand, there's a 75-million-year-old rock formation. These rocks look like three whales swimming together. The beautiful design created by nature became known as Three Whales Rock. Millions of years ago, this area was just a desert, but the land was changing. Gradually, sandstone got pulled apart by the movements of tectonic plates and erosion. That's how these spectacular formations were created. If you decide to explore the system of trails around Three Whales Rock, you'll find waterfalls and an abundance of fauna and flora there. Located on Gamal and Gaiden peninsulas, these expansive pit holes were discovered in 2014. They seem to be still changing and evolving. The pits grow wider, and people find them more often. Of course, there's no shortage of theories about how they appeared. Suggestions range from meteorite impacts to the activity of other civilizations. But the most common explanation is that methane gas reacted to water molecules after the planet's permafrost started to melt. This resulted in bubbles of methane bursting through the ice. The craters could be thousands of years old, but nobody knows for sure. You're driving to the state of New Mexico, to the small town of Taos. 2% of the locals hear a strange buzzing in the air every day. Some residents believe the sound is somehow connected with technologies used by guests from other galaxies. Ooh. Also, there is a theory that something sinister lives in the town. They say Taos is cursed. An evil spirit or a phantom punishes people for something their ancestors did in the past. Scientists still can't explain the nature of this sound. Another theory says it's caused by unusual acoustics of the location, while others think the buzzing is a hallucination. Some can hear it because 
Everybody talks about something, and our minds create an illusion of the sound that doesn't really exist. The sound isn't the same for everyone, either. For some, it's a low hum. For others, it's more of a buzzing sound. But this is not the only place where you can hear the strange noises. It's called the hum, and people worldwide claim to have heard it. Some dwellers of a small village in Scotland describe it as a low, thick hum. Well, some residents of Florida heard a similar sound, too. It's not exactly known where this phenomenon appeared, but the first time the media started talking about it was in the 1970s in England. Also, there are written records of a mysterious buzzing dating back almost 200 years. According to some estimates, only about 2% of people on the planet can hear the hum. Perhaps their ears pick up some low-frequency waves, or the reason is something else entirely. Maybe, just maybe, they hear humming because the person doing it doesn't know the words to the song. Yeah, that joke is also 200 years old. A volcano in Indonesia spews bright blue lava and produces electric blue and purple flames. This phenomenon occurs because the volcano has some of the highest levels of sulfur in the world. You can also know you're near it by its foul stench. But I digress. And when sulfuric gases interact with scorching hot air and get lit by the molten lava, they turn blue. You can also find the world's largest acid lake inside this crater. Yep, it's a real stinker. Underwater rivers and lakes are called brine pools for a reason. High salinity makes the water in them denser than the seawater around. That's why it sinks to the bottom, forming rivers and lakes. Those have waves of their own, and these waves can sometimes lap up against the shorelines. If you went down there in the submarine, it would easily float on the surface of a brine pool. But without a submarine, swimming in such a lake would be too risky. They contain too much toxic methane and hydrogen sulfide. Yeah, I'd pass on that too. But hey, be my guest! Cave of Crystals in Mexico is home to the world's most unique crystal formations. Thanks to super-rare conditions in the cave, crystals there grow to unbelievable sizes. The air inside is incredibly humid. The water contains tons of minerals that boost the growth of the Milky White Giants. Some of them are longer than telephone poles. Cylindrical snow donuts occur when a wind gust starts to roll some snow across a snowy area, as if making a snowball. If it was a real thing, it would eventually become too heavy for the wind to move. But a snow donut's center is hollowed out. This happens because its inner layer is too thin and is blown away when the donut is formed. This makes the thing lighter than a snowball. That's also why it rolls further. Unfortunately, snow donuts are rare because they need very precise conditions to appear. The Danakil Depression in Ethiopia is probably one of the most bizarre-looking places you'll ever see. It's dotted with neon-colored hot springs, lava pools, and vast salt flats. You've got to be especially careful there. Toxic gases are swirling over hydrothermal fields, and many pools are super acidic. So, mm, don't go swimming. Until at least 30 minutes after lunch. <laughs> Just kidding. And finally, there's nothing mysterious about 28,000 rubber ducks found in the sea in 1992. That's when a ship transporting bath toys got lost in the ocean while traveling from Hong Kong to the U.S. Some of these ducks are still floating in the ocean several decades later. They've been spotted in South America, Alaska, Hawaii, and even Australia. And they make bath time lots of fun. The Boxing Day Tsunami, Indonesia. An undersea earthquake starts in the morning. Its tremors cause a series of tsunami waves. The largest reaches the height of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. Unzen Volcano Mega Tsunami A powerful volcanic eruption triggers a landslide from a 4,000-year-old lava dome. It sweeps through the city of Shimabara and reaches the sea, setting off a mega tsunami. The Vajon Dam Mega Tsunami, Italy A landslide drags 9 billion cubic feet of forest, soil, and rock into the lake. A dark wall of water covers the sky over a tiny village at the bottom of the Vajon Dam. Then, with a deafening roar, 
the wave overtops the edge of the dam, taking out everything in its path. Mount St. Helen Mega Tsunami, USA. As the volcano erupts, the upper 1,500 feet of Mount St. Helen collapses into a massive landslide. Part of this avalanche plunges down into nearby Spirit Lake, which splashes the lake waters into a series of waves almost as tall as the Eiffel Tower. Alaska's Latuya Bay Tsunami A landslide caused by an earthquake creates a mega wave. It surges over the headland and washes away trees, plants, and soil down to bedrock. Molokai, Hawaii A third of the East Molokai volcano caves in and collapses into the Pacific Ocean. This causes a tsunami the size of the second tallest building in the world, Shanghai Tower. The waves reach Mexico and California. The Yucatan Asteroid Tsunami The asteroid, which is rumored to have wiped out dinosaurs, strikes the Yucatan Peninsula. It creates a mega-tsunami, the largest in Earth's history. The first wave's almost twice bigger than the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. Hurricane Mitch Mitch forms in the Western Caribbean Sea. Soon it strengthens to become the eighth most powerful Atlantic hurricane ever. The storm pours 4 inches of rain per hour for two days in Honduras. It causes terrible mudslides and floods. Hurricane Allen Rare and extremely powerful, the storm is one of the few to reach Category 5, the highest possible. It causes more than $2 billion in damage. The Great Hurricane After tearing down Barbados, the storm moves on. It strips the bark off the trees growing on Martinique and St. Lucia and travels further. This horrific natural disaster lasts for six days. Hurricane Dorian It's the most powerful tropical cyclone to hit the Bahamas. The hurricane flattens most of the structures on the islands and sweeps them into the sea. Hurricane Wilma The storm occurs in the Caribbean Sea near Jamaica and heads to the west. Two days later, it gathers enough power to turn into the most intense hurricane ever recorded in the Atlantic Ocean. Hurricane Patricia A regular storm develops a well-defined eye and turns into a Category 5 hurricane within a mere 24 hours. At one point, it travels faster than a Ferrari moving at its top speed. It makes Patricia the world's most intense tropical cyclone ever recorded. Kamchatka Earthquake It happens in the early morning 80 miles away from the shores of Kamchatka. The earth tremors produce a tsunami. The first two waves are catastrophic, up to 60 feet high. The third one's much weaker. Valparaiso Earthquake, Chile It happens at about 5 a.m. along the boundary of two tectonic plates. The tsunami, triggered by the earthquake, wipes out 620 miles of Chile's coastline. Tohoku Earthquake, Japan The first earth tremors start at a great underwater depth. The earthquake is so strong, it moves Japan's main island. It shifts the planet on its axis by up to 10 inches and increases its rotation speed. The disaster also triggers a tsunami with 133-foot high waves that travel 6 miles inland. Indian Ocean Earthquake, Sumatra A rupture along two tectonic plates sets off an undersea earthquake. It begins at about 8 a.m. near northern Sumatra, Indonesia. It makes the planet vibrate nearly a half inch and sets off earthquakes all over the world up to Alaska. Good Friday Earthquake, Alaska The most powerful earthquake recorded in North America lasts for 4 minutes and 38 seconds. A 600-mile-long crack causes terrible landslides and a 27-foot tsunami. Areas 200 miles away get raised by 30 feet. Other places permanently drop 8 feet. Valdiva, Chile The Great Chilean Earthquake starts in the afternoon and lasts for no less than 10 minutes. The disaster affects an area the size of California. It triggers tsunamis that reach the shore of Hawaii, Japan, the Philippines, Australia, and New Zealand. The average tornado usually lasts less than 10 minutes, but there are exceptions. El Reno Tornado It's considered the world's largest tornado based on width. At its peak, the twister reaches 2.5 miles across. The Perryville Tornado, U.S. It occurs at about 2 a.m., 
and starts with snapping hardwood trees and breaking down stone constructions. Then the whirlwind becomes stronger. It levels two-story buildings, flips and tosses cars as if they were toys. Bridge Creek Moor Tornado When the twister gets into the town of Bridge Creek, its width is at its peak, 1 to 1.5 miles. The wind speed of the tornado reaches more than 300 miles per hour. This natural disaster causes $1 billion in damage. Manitoba, Canada An outstanding tornado rages for nearly three hours. It breaks tons of trees and utility poles, damages roads and farmhouses, but miraculously misses every town on its path. Tri-State Tornado, U.S. The world's longest-lasting single tornado travels 220 miles through Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana. The average tornado's path is usually no longer than 5 miles. Tupelo, Gainesville, U.S. An outbreak that consists of at least 12 single tornadoes wipes out everything on its way. The accompanying rainstorms also trigger severe flash floods that make matters even worse. Valjant Landslide, Italy At 10 p.m., a landslide with a volume of 100 Great Pyramids of Giza breaks off from the top of Monte Toc. It falls into the Valjant Dam Reservoir, producing a tsunami wave taller than the Golden Gate Bridge. Yunnan, China An avalanche of rock, stones, and mud, so big it could fill up Sydney Harbor, forms a dam on the Jinsha River. The Hida River, Japan Triggered by a rainstorm, 300,000 Olympic swimming pools of debris flows down before getting stopped by another, earlier landslide. Along the way, the landslide sweeps two buses off the road. Peru A rock slide dams the Rio Montanero, a long river running through the center of Peru. The whole process takes no more than 3 minutes, which means the landslide moves at a speed of up to 87 miles per hour. It also leaves a trail of debris 5 miles long. The Usoi Dam, Tajikistan Set off by a magnitude 7.4 earthquake, the rock slide falls into the Murgab River and blocks its flow. That's how the Usoi Dam, one of the tallest in the world, appears. Mount St. Helens, USA At 8.30 a.m., after much buildup, a volcanic vent finally gives way and sets off a catastrophic eruption which makes the entire north side of Mount St. Helens fall away. It's the world's largest recorded landslide. North Bonneville, U.S. In the middle of the 15th century, a great earthquake occurs. An incredible amount of debris rushes down from Table Mountain. It covers more than 5 square miles and blocks the Columbia River with a dam 200 feet high and 3.5 miles long. In Russia, on the shores of the Baltic Sea, there's an enigmatic national park. The Dancing Forest is a place that no scientist has managed to explain so far. The pine trees of the forest are all crooked and twisted into loops and spirals. The forest didn't appear until the early 60s, when the pines were planted in order to make the sand dune in that area more stable. One theory is that it's the unstable sand that made the trees twist in such a way. Other theories for the crooked trees are strong winds, or even supernatural powers. Some people say the forest is a place where positive and negative energies meet, twisting the trees. Local legend says that if a person climbs through one of the rings of a tree, it'll add an extra year to this person's life, or they'll be granted a wish. I like that one. Speaking of bizarre trees, and I was, one grows in the region of Piedmont, Italy. There, a cherry tree grows on the top of a mulberry tree. The strange thing is that both trees are perfectly healthy. A continuous storm at Saturn's North Pole has an odd shape, a hexagon. This is probably because of the gradient of the winds. The total length of this cloud pattern is 9,000 miles, which is about 1,200 miles longer than the Earth's diameter. The hexagon has been observed for many years, but it gets even more mysterious because it changes color too. It used to be turquoise, but it has recently shifted to a golden color. The reason for the color change is that the pole gets exposed to sunlight as the seasons change. 
Now, rain isn't unusual for Oakville, Washington. However, this one still doesn't have any solid scientific explanation. Instead of common raindrops, people watch translucent jelly-like blobs fall from the skies. These blobs covered about 20 square miles. Those who got really close to the rain experienced flu-like symptoms. What were the blobs? Researchers claim that the blobs contain human white blood cells. Later tests showed no presence of nuclei. Some people claim the blobs might have been evaporated jellyfish resulting in rain, or maybe even waste from a commercial plane. Walking rocks, also known as sailing rocks, move across the Death Valley National Park in California without any external intervention, leaving long trails in the dirt and sand along their way. Various time-lapse footages of the moving rocks have been taken. Scientists even installed GPS navigators on some of the rocks, and it showed that the rocks move at a considerable speed. Some researchers believe that the movement is due to thin sheets of ice that form overnight at freezing temperatures in the valley, letting the rocks move until it melts during the day. Or there was a Rolling Stones concert. Nah. The Batagaika Crater in Siberia looks like a doorway to the underworld. It's about a half mile long and over 280 feet deep, but it never stops growing. As it gets deeper, it exposes more underground layers. The layers show what our planet looked like thousands of years ago, as the slumps reveal the used-to-be climates. The crater appeared back in the 60s, and it all started with rapid deforestation. Trees no longer cast shade on the ground, and it got hotter. The permafrost melted, resulting in the crater formation. The throbbing hum in Taos, New Mexico has driven locals wild since the 1990s. The low-frequency hum deprives people of sleep and depletes their energy. Even though scientists have tried to find the source of the hum, they still haven't pinpointed its origin. Different variations of the hum have also been heard in the UK, Australia, Canada, and other areas of the US. Luckily, only about 2% of the world's population can hear it. The hums have been blamed on mechanical devices, multiple disturbances of auditory systems, and even animals. The West Seattle hum, for example, was blamed on toadfish. Fairy rings, also known as elf rings or pixie rings, are mysterious rings of mushrooms that appear in grasslands and forested areas. There's a lot of debate about why these fungi form a nearly perfect circle. Some superstitions claim that fairy dances would burn the ground, causing mushrooms to rapidly grow. In Costa Rica, there's an assortment of about 300 spherical stone balls. Locals call them las bolas, which is simply the balls in English. These stones have an almost perfect round shape. Some of them are huge, weighing up to 16 tons each. They're also made of different materials – gabbro, limestone, and sandstone. They're considered to have been put in straight lines in front of the chief's houses, but there's no precise information of their origin. Some myths claim that these stones originated in Atlantis. Mm. If you ever travel to the Mekong River in late October, you have a chance of seeing glowing balls rising from the water and beelining up into the air. Locals call these glowing balls the Naga fireballs. The size of the lights vary. The reddish balls can be as tiny as a spark and as large as a basketball. There can be dozens to thousands of balls a night. Scientists don't have any solid explanation for why it happens, but it could be due to flammable gases released by the marshy environment. Some superstitious locals are sure it's all because of a giant serpent living in the Mekong. Great balls of fire! In Minnesota, on the north shore of Lake Superior, there's a park known for the Devil's Kettle. This is a waterfall that splits in two. One part of the river continues, while the other part disappears into a hole in the ground. Whatever object you throw into the Devil's Kettle won't reappear. Scientists still haven't fully explained where the water that drops into the hole goes. Devil's Kettle is considered to be unsafe for people because it's nearly impossible to trace the flow. Yeah, not a place to go tubing. Grunions are fish known for their bizarre mating ritual. The females climb out of the water and onto the shore. 
They dig their tails into the sand in order to lay eggs. The legs stay hidden in the sand, waiting. Ten days later, the high tide comes, washing the newly hatched young to the sea. Scientists still can't give any solid explanation for this way of breeding. People who live in rural central Norway over the Hesdalen Valley can often witness floating lights of white, yellow, and red cross the sky. The lights appear both at day and night, and once back in the 80s, they were spotted 15 to 20 times in a single week. The Hesdalen lights can last just a few seconds, but sometimes they can last more than an hour. The lights move, seeming to float or even sway around. Some scientists believe that the reason for these lights is due to ionized iron dust. Others say it's combustion that includes sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen. Many people claim they're just misidentified aircrafts. Yellowstone Park has a famous boiling lake, but it's not the world's only place of boiling water. Deep in the Amazon, there's the four-mile Chanay Tempishka River that's always hot. The name means boiled by the sun. Well, it's not exactly boiling, but it can reach 196 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to cook pasta. Ooh, let's try that. The lowest temperature in these waters is about 113 degrees. This river still can't be scientifically explained because it would require close proximity to a volcano for the water to reach such temperatures. However, the closest volcano is 400 miles away. But there could be a fault between the Earth that could explain this phenomenon. In western Venezuela, locals living close to the Catatumbo River aren't afraid of lightning because they see it almost every single night. It starts at around 7 o'clock and doesn't stop until dawn. The everlasting Catatumbo lightning did once stop for a few months, from January to March 2010. It was probably due to drought, or maybe the charge ran out. In 1991, a scientist suggested that the phenomenon happens because of cold and warm air currents meeting in the area. Another theory is that the lightning could be due to the presence of uranium in the bedrock. Speaking of lightning, I got a bolt. Bye! You feel some rumbling from below. No, it's not your tummy. It's low and ominous. You look up and see strange lights hanging above the ground. They look like shimmering balls of light hovering high up in the sky. Your throat goes dry, and you gulp. That's what they call the earthquake lights. This phenomenon is poorly understood, but witnesses say they've seen it in different shapes and sizes. It could be in the form of light balls, sheet lightning, streamers, and a steady glow in the sky. Soon after, a strong earthquake follows. Scientists can't explain why those lights appear, and they don't always do either. Some believe that's a reaction of underground gases released into the atmosphere. Sure enough, an earthquake begins. But lucky you, it's not as strong as you expected. The ground is shaking, but you even manage to keep your balance. It stops as abruptly as it began, and you walk home. On the way home, you see a flash and hear a whip crack. Lightning has struck a lone tree near where you just stood. It's caught on fire, and... There's a column of flames rising to the sky. Still no rain, and the pillar becomes taller and taller. Have you heard of such a thing as a fire tornado? These phenomena occur when the wind is caught in a circle close to the ground because of the difference in air pressure. Such mini tornadoes are usually easy to notice. Small rubble, dust, sand, and leaves rise into the air and start flying in rapid circles. But then, if there's a source of fire nearby, the funnel can catch it and blow it stronger, like bellows. The flames go round and round, reaching ever higher and eventually creating a swirling, blazing tower. Luckily, fire tornadoes are short-lived and don't normally cause much damage. But don't try to hide from the storm under that tree. You can find this unusual plant in Florida and in some parts of the Caribbean coast. Externally, it doesn't look special at all. A great trunk, green leaves, and fruit similar to small apples. What you must remember is never to pluck these apples and never stand next to the tree, especially if it's raining. This is the manchineel tree, which is considered the most dangerous in the world. Its trunk, bark, branches, and fruit contain poisonous juice. One drop of this corrosive acidic liquid can harm your skin a lot. 
the tree can secrete this juice, and if you accidentally touch it, you risk burning your hand. When it rains, water droplets fall on the tree and mix with the poison. Water can also bounce off the bark and get on your skin. That's why you shouldn't stand nearby either. There are almost no other shrubs or mushrooms growing around. Animals avoid these trees, and people don't chop them and don't pluck the fruit. You can't make a bonfire from their branches. Burning wood emits poisonous smoke that can damage your eyes. Locals know this tree well, but tourists and travelers might accidentally get harmed. That's why most manchineal trees are marked with paint or have a warning sign. In western Venezuela, locals living close to the Catatumbo River aren't afraid of lightning because they see it almost every single night. It starts at around 7 o'clock and doesn't stop until dawn. The everlasting Catatumbo lightning did one stop for a few months, from January to March 2010. It was probably due to drought, or maybe the charge ran out. In 1991, a scientist suggested that the phenomenon happens because of cold and warm air currents meeting in the area. Another theory is that the lightning could be due to the presence of uranium in the bedrock. Not all lightning happens inside clouds. There's a rare phenomenon called a dirty thunderstorm. The lightning happens above a volcano. The most famous is in Japan. It erupts almost every day and spits black clouds high into the air. So it's super scary volcano clouds plus lightning. Whoa! Regular lightning happens during a storm when ice crystals bump into each other. In a dirty thunderstorm, bits of volcanic ash collide, create friction, and spark up the sky. In the hottest and one of the driest places on Earth, Africa's Donakil Desert, temperatures often rise above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The out-of-this-world landscape has many active volcanoes and geysers that spit out toxic gases like chlorine and sulfur. The vibrantly green, electric blue, and yellow waters are all rain and seawater warmed up by magma. One wrong step here, and you'd be gone for good. This happened in June 2009. People in certain areas in Japan left their homes after a heavy downpour, only to find fish, frogs, and tadpoles everywhere. Fields, roads, lawns, and rooftops were littered with these aquatic creatures. One man was shocked to see 13 carp on and around his truck. Apparently, he stopped to count them. No one knows for sure where the bizarre rain came from, but the most popular theory claims that a powerful water spout picked up all these creatures. Then it carried them through the upper atmosphere and dropped the animals on the unsuspecting people below. And now, welcome to Abraham Lake in Canada. It's completely frozen. You step onto the transparent ice and look down at what lies beneath. No fish, just some mysterious frozen bubbles. They look like small clouds frozen in ice, or jellyfish who forgot to pack a winter jacket. There are thousands of these little bubbles made up of methane. But don't try to dig a hole in the ice to touch it. Methane is highly flammable. It's created by methane-producing bacteria that eats leaves, grass, insects, or any other organic stuff that gets into the lake. When the methane touches the frozen water, it turns into tens of thousands of frozen little balls. When the ice melts, they burst open and sizzle. Similar lakes can be found near some shores of the Arctic Ocean. There, the size of the bubbles can reach several times the size of hot air balloons. Beautiful for sure, but not exactly safe. The next shocking lake is in Indonesia, the island of Java. You come to a majestic volcano, overgrown with grass and trees. The volcano seems to be asleep, but smoke is pouring out of it. You climb to the summit. Exhausted, tired, sweaty, you're ready to cool off. Nice work, you made it to the top. You look into the mouth of the volcano. Hmm, no boiling lava, just a beautiful, bright, turquoise lake down there. It looks like an oasis. Perfect time for a refreshing dip. You run down and get ready to jump in. But that's not water, that's acid! Sulfurous gases get into the lake from under the volcano. The lake itself is full of metals. When the gases touch them, they form that beautiful turquoise water. I mean, acid. Better head back to the nearest village, rest, and come back at night when it's cooler. In the dark, the lake seems to glow. Right above it, you see light-filled, exploding little clouds. 
the sulfurous gases rise out of the lake, combine with the air, and flash bright blue. Still, don't get too close. The sea turns sinister red, and no living being can survive in it. it. Must be some dark magic. In fact, it's tiny algae that spread uncontrollably, giving the water this specific tint called the red tide. They have toxins that destroy sea mammals, birds, and turtles, as well as creatures that feed on them. For humans, contact with it ends in breathing problems or seafood poisoning. Sometimes even huge ships sink in the open seas for no visible reason. That reason is often the pockets of bubbles that underwater volcanoes produce even while they're sleeping. Those productive magma factories are hidden under 8,500 feet of water. When they wake up, they act just like land volcanoes, and they can cause destructive tsunamis. This tree looks like a bottle. No wonder it's called the bottle tree. It grows in Namibia and attracts many tourists. But don't get too close to the tree because it's one of the most dangerous on Earth. Milky juice flows inside the trunk. It's highly toxic to the human body. On the bright side though, the trees have beautiful pink-white leaves with a red core. There's a tree growing in Western Australia that was once used as a prison. A cell for criminals existed inside the Boab prison tree for a long time. People were usually kept there temporarily, just for one night. After that, they were taken to their final destination. The prison was built more than 1,500 years ago and has been perfectly preserved to this day. Tourists visiting this place can sneak a peek inside. Hey, ever heard of a fire rainbow? Yeah, me neither. How about a circumhorizontal arc? Didn't think so, but just so you know, they're one and the same thing. At first glance, it looks like a painting, or like a rainbow-colored splash in the sky. Despite the name, they have nothing in common with either fire or rain. This phenomenon happens on rare occasions when the sun shines through a particular type of ice cloud formation. The rainbow halos are just as unique. Again, a specific type of ice crystals and clouds needs to be present for the surface of the Earth to bend light from the sun into a perfect ring. The same thing can happen with moonlight. The only difference will be that moon halos are usually white and sun halos can be rainbow-colored. When visiting regions with high altitudes, you may be one of the lucky people to stumble upon penitentes. They're basically naturally formed ice spikes. For them to be formed, they need a really cold and elevated environment where the air is dry. The sunlight turns ice directly into vapor rather than melting it into water. And that's why these blades of snow and ice start to pop up on the surface of the Earth. As cute as they may be, they can end up as tall as 15 feet. Now, what happens when small individual droplets of lava meet the wind? Pele's hair, basically. Let me explain. The word Pele comes from an ancient Hawaiian symbol for volcanoes. Whenever the wind picks up little drops of lava, it stretches them into hair-like strands, similar to the process of glass wire creation. These delicate strands can stretch as far as 6 feet. On rare occasions, it can rain without any clouds. But does it really? Let's look at the science behind this rare phenomenon. It's sometimes called a sun shower, just because it looks like the rain is falling straight from the sun. Let's be clear though, there is no way rain can ever come down directly from a star. Rain clouds are at a bit of a distance from that specific location. With sun rays being angled, the clouds become out of sight. Add a little wind to blow the rain in your direction, and ta-da! You get sun showers. Located in Bolivia is a place called Salar de Uni. It's the largest salt flat in the world. It's also the home of half of the world's lithium, which is a crucial component for making batteries. But what else is so special about this place? Well, whenever the rain season comes, it turns this piece of flat land into a perfectly reflective mirror lake. What comes to your mind when you hear about the Blood Falls? A horror movie? <laughs> well, they are merely a series of waterfalls located in one of the driest regions of Antarctica. They emerge from an underground lake filled with a special kind of bacteria. These little organisms use sulfates as fuel instead of sugars, which makes them very intriguing for scientists. 
The water contained in this lake is so full of iron that it basically just rusts when it meets the air. Hence, the reddish color of the waterfall, which also gives it its trademark name. Okay, we all know the song, but it's not really made up. There is actually such a thing called a desert rose. It's not a plant, though, but a unique form of the mineral gypsum. It develops in dry sandy places that can occasionally flood. This constant switching between a wet and dry environment lets the gypsum crystals emerge between grains of sand, trapping them and forming a rose-like shape. Ever heard of the Eye of Sahara? Scientists are still trying to figure out how it was formed. You can only see it if you fly above it, but it's basically a naturally formed dome that dates back to approximately 100 million years ago. And no, I wasn't around then. It has a rough diameter of 25 miles and consists of a bunch of concentric rings. The biggest one, or the central area, measures about 19 miles in diameter. Astronauts were some of the first people to notice it, and it's been studied ever since. In fact, even to this day, when landing in Florida, they know they're almost home when they see the Eye of Sahara. One of the most beautifully colored trees in the world is located in the Philippines and Indonesia. It's called the rainbow eucalyptus. It got its name because of its bark that switches colors and peels away as the tree ages. The bright green bark is the youngest, as it contains a substance called chlorophyll, usually found in leaves. It then switches to purple and then to the color red. And finally, it turns brown as it grows and loses the chlorophyll. Now, don't be tricked into thinking that's a whole forest. It's one single tree. And no, it's not some sort of optical illusion either. Let me explain. Underneath that soil, there is a complex network of roots that connects around 47,000 tree-like shapes you see above the ground. It's called the quaking aspen. Some of these trees are among the oldest and largest organisms in the world. Now, here's a good destination for all travelers, or maybe not so good after all. The most lightning-stricken area in the world, according to recent data released by NASA, is Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela. Out of all the days in a year, 300 of them feature thunderstorms in this location. What makes this area so unique, though, that storms happen so often? Well, it's because where cool mountain air meets the warm, moist breeze and generates electricity over the lake. The Eternal Flame Falls are located in upstate New York, near the Canadian border. In this region, there is a tiny waterfall with a big secret, a spark about 8 inches tall. Turns out there's a natural gas seat that provides fuel to the flame behind the waterfall. The waterfall provides enough coverage so that it stays lit pretty much every time. Hikers do enjoy to relight it if they see that it's been blown out. This phenomenon is actually quite common, but this one gained more popularity because it is younger than most. And it looks very good in pictures, let's be honest. I've heard of yellow sand, white sand, and even black sand here or there. But I've never heard of green beaches until now. Papacolia also known as Green Sand Beach, is located in Hawaii and is one of the few beaches in the world that features green sand. The unique coloring comes from olivine rock that was formed when a nearby volcano erupted. Actually, in Hawaii, all the volcanoes are nearby. Move over green sands because some of the other beaches around the world can even glow at night. And it's completely natural. The culprit? A little thing called photoplankton or microalgae, as they're sometimes called. They're basically little plants that contain chlorophyll and need sunlight in order to live and grow. Most photoplankton kinds are able to float in the upper part of the ocean, where the sunlight can still reach them beneath the water. When the photoplankton gets agitated by the movement of waves and currents, they emit light, which looks like some glow during the night. These special microorganisms are found on beaches in a lot of places around the world, such as the Maldives, Puerto Rico, and the Everglades. At the base of a mountain located just outside of Afton, Wyoming, is a little river called the Intermittent Spring. There are only three of this kind in the whole world, but what makes this little string of water so mysterious? Well, the fact that it starts and stops every few minutes scientists have yet to pinpoint precisely why this happens. 
They speculate that it's basically just a siphon effect that happens deep within the ground that causes the river to just start and stop so often. Should you ever be interested in checking it out, be sure to do so in the late summer, as that's when the intermittent spring is most active. Do you see the irony here? You can only see the spring in the summer? Okay, I'm done. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click